Good morning and welcome. Good morning. A beautiful day, but hopefully we will get some rain. We need rain. Uh, there are a few announcements. Uh, and you can, see, I, I'm just going to go through the calendar briefly. There's a, um, all of the usual things are going on and a uh, congregation caring for the earth is meeting downstairs here at 10 a.m. on Monday the 15th. There's a support committee meeting, a session meeting. We're gonna wish a really happy birthday to Bob Prozen. Can we sing? anymore. <laughs> uh, the Presbyterian women are invited to the Presbyterian Women of Northern Waters Spring Gathering and April meeting on May 3rd and 4th in Grand Rapids. And there's a flyer on the back table if you want more information. And then I just want to say a few words about the celebration of life for Larry Salo that was here in this church last Wednesday. What a, just a wonderful gathering. I've never seen so many people in this church. It's just a tribute to how many lives he touched. And Irene, you should be really, really proud. I mean, there is a life well lived. And so many people. And we'll continue to pray for Irene and the family. Is there anything else that anybody wants to announce or say? All right, then we'll go to the introit. Oh, Wendy wants to say something. All of these Easter lilies are here but they can be distributed to anyone that we want to distribute them to who might appreciate them. So um, Pad and I talked about it this morning, and today I will deliver one to Ruth Saarinen and Roselle Parsons, but whoever wants to deliver any of them to anyone. Yes, Judy. Okay, okay. Oh, you're gonna, okay, sounds good. So, lilies are available to anybody who wants to take one to deliver or to keep at home, I guess. Okay, anything else? All right, well then we'll have the introit.
into our fears and through our locked doors. When we think peace be with you means no change or disruption. Amidst our lives that confuse religious entertainment with Easter fulfillment. For the sake of a community meant to be its best during crisis. Come Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And now um, you can stand for the gathering hymn, which is 111. Good Christians all rejoice and sing. Now join in the prayer of confession. O Lord, our God, we think our best should happen when we are in control. Forgive us for not expecting the risen Christ to show up when we are anxious, content to lock the doors of your house for fear of all that is outside. Forgive us for thinking that church mainly happens inside these walls and not into the world you love and into which we are sent. Forgive us for look for your power in all the conventional places, but never in places of brokenness, crisis, and defeat. In your mercy, forget what we have been repair what we and by the power of Christ's resurrection raise us up to serve others for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord amen we will now take some time to offer our silent prayers and confession to almighty God let us pray And our words of assurance on this morning are this. You are already forgiven. You are loved and you are whole. In Christ, you are a fully flourishing human being. Go live like it. In the spirit, you are not isolated. You're not an isolated spiritual being doing Christianity alone. 
but you are part of a community of faith. Go build that community. By the grace of God, every human being is seen, loved, and made whole. Go practice that. Amen. Now you may be seated. The Old Testament lesson is Psalm 133. How wonderful it is, how pleasant, for God's people to live together in harmony. It is like the precious anointing oil running down from Aaron's head and beard down to the collar of his robes. It is like the dew on Mount Hermon falling on the hills of Zion. That is where the Lord has promised his blessing, life that never ends. This is the word of the Lord. And a light onto our path. Now, our friend Judy Erickson is going to do the time with young disciples. For our young disciples who are here, Leland and Orion. And I love your matching shirts today. You look so cool. Thank you, Judy. Aren't you going to sit next to me? Mm. <laughs> well, that was a loud noise if I ever heard one. But you know what this book is that I'm holding? Mm. What is it? Good News Bible. Good News Bible. You're right. Good News Bible. Can you say that? Mm. <laughs> no, say Good News Bible. Mm. <laughs> okay. Well, I guess that's it for today for you, huh? This is a good news Bible, and in the good news Bible, it talks about how we are all one in Jesus Christ. We are all one. Did you know that? When we come here today, we're all part of all of this family here. Do they feel like family? Do they feel like family? No, but you're going to get to know them. I think you view them as my family. Well, kind of, kind of. Yeah, so, so today what we have to remember is that God is always with us wherever we go. Can you tell me what I just said? I don't know. Can you tell me what I said? I don't know. <laughs> God is always with us. Mm. So can you say that? God is always with us. Mm. God is always with us. Can you say it together? God is always with us. Can everybody say it? God is always with us. And we are all part of the family. And we are all part of the family. And we're part of the family of God. We're part of the family of God. Thank you. And we're just going to say a quick prayer and then we'll be done. Okay? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you that you see Leland, that you see Orion, that you know them and you call them by name. Thank you that you are here with us and that you know each one of us in our hearts and minds. Thank you that we are yours in Jesus Christ. Thank you for this day and thank you for 
all the people that are here that are part of our family. Bless us now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Very good. Thank you. And while they're going back to their seats, our choir will come up and sing our choir anthem today. Which is, and, Angie? Sing a new song. It's called Sing a New Song. It's one of my favorite songs that they sing. So thank you for singing it, choir. much. Sing a new song unto the Lord, singing Alleluia. What wonderful lyrics. We appreciate our choir. Thank you very much, Angie, and choir. Much appreciated. And I have to thank all of you for being here this morning. It seems like we're having more and more people in our congregation every Sunday, and it is wonderful to see. And it's great to have each of you here because each of you is very important to us and very important to God, that is for sure. So our meditation on this day, April 7th, 2024, 
will come from our New Testament lesson. And I honestly have to tell you that out of the lectionary readings this week, I really did choose these because they were the shortest ones. Because I knew we were having communion, and I know how much Presbyterians like to keep their church service within one hour. <laughs> so there are ways of doing that. <laughs> and this is one of them. So this is our three-verse meditation from the New Testament lesson. And it's called, The Believers Share Their Possessions. The group of believers was one in mind and heart. None of them said that any of their belongings were their own, but they all shared with one another everything they had. With great power, the apostle gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and God poured rich blessings on them all. There was no one in the group who was in need. Those who owned fields or houses would sell them, bring the money received from the sale, and turn it over to the apostles, and the money was distributed according to the needs of the people. This is the word of the Lord. May it be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Amen. Before I uh, do the prayer of illumination, I would just like to say that as I was reading this, I was thinking about the uh, communal effort of everyone yesterday, and, or Wednesday, and how much everyone gave and how much everyone encouraged one another. And during that service, there was no one who was in need because everyone was so supportive of one another. Thank you so much for being that kind of congregation. So now please pray with me. Divine Redeemer, bearer of our lives, open us to the wisdom of your word today and enlighten us with your truth. Liberate us from all that distracts us, God, and all that turns us from your path. Guide us and ground us in Christ's everlasting hope. Amen. So our meditation today is titled, In Praise of Living in Harmony. I bet you would like that one, Angie, because you like when the choir sings in harmony, right? <laughs> yeah, even when they don't sing in harmony, you're okay with it. So in the heart of this April in northern Minnesota, this morning, where the stubborn snow finally yields to the warming embrace of spring, and I was just looking at all the snow piles out around where I live and other places, where they're now just melting because of the warm embrace of spring, which is the sun. There's a unique, in my humble opinion, almost palpable sense of renewal and unity in the air in spring. Just as the thawing lakes and rivers merge and they flow freely once more in the spring, we are reminded of the profound beauty and unity that exists in harmony. They're very similar, aren't they? The outdoors and the beauty and the harmony that we hear sometimes that's so beautiful in music. So today I'd like us to explore the beauty through the lens of scripture, specifically Psalm 133, which you read, Kay, thank you so much, that was lovely, and Acts 4, 32 through 35, which I read, and see how these themes of unity and harmony tie into the blessings we receive during the spring and also during the sacred practice of the Lord's Supper. So the goal today was to tie everything together. <laughs> so you can see if it all tied or if it's untied. <laughs> so there are three main points at once again. The first one is the beauty of unity in the faith community. 
And that's what I was talking about when I was saying what I saw on Wednesday, that there was wonderful beauty in unity of this faith community. So Psalm 133, which Kay read, opens with how good and how pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. This psalm, though it's brief, is a powerful testament to the blessings that flow from unity. John Calvin, as we know, who is a prov prominent Reformed theologian, remarked on this psalm, and actually John Calvin said, Concord, and I didn't know that Concord also is a synonym for unity. So Concord among brethren is a treasure as valuable as it is rare. And you can tell by using the word Concord and brethren that John Calvin was operating in the 16th century. But his words could make sense today too, because unity among us is a treasure but it is very valuable. But I think we could all agree that in any organization that we're part of, that sometimes it's rare. And discord seems to be the rule of the day, which is not what Christ would mandate for us as Christians, but sometimes we see it. And that's where we can have an opportunity to be light. So in Northern Minnesota, after a long winter, the sight of the community coming together for spring festivities, and we know that there are a lot in April, um, actually mirror this biblical harmony. It's like watching, and I'm sure that you've all done this this spring, ice melt away because when the ice melts away, it reveals the bright, vibrant life beneath. I seem to not have much skill in my wording today, so I'll try to pronounce things more clearly. <laughs> All right. So, it's a poignant, is that how you say that word, poignant? <laughs> okay, thank you, Bill. Bill knows how to, pro how to pronounce poignant. Reminder that unity often thrives when we have endured hardships. And many of us have hardships in our lives currently. But we do know that when we are in hardship, it's wonderful to have a supportive community surrounding us, one that we know we can count on when we are enduring hardship. So number two, is the practice of unity and sharing. And that comes from Acts 4, 32 through 35. So Acts 4, 32 through 35 shows the early Christian community living out this principle of unity through radical generosity and selflessness. So they shared everything. They shared all their money, all their property, all their food. The early Christian church did that. And I know in the 70s, there was kind of a movement, and I know that Mark Escala, who spoke at Larry Salo's funeral, alluded to this movement called the Jesus Movement, where people wanted to get back to the basics of scriptures. And at that point, there were a lot of groups uh, that were living communally and sharing. And there still, still are some to this day in the United States and other countries that do that because they want, they want to live like the early Christian community lived. So all the believers at that time were in heart and mind. No, no one claimed that any of their possessions were their own, but they shared everything they had. Charles Spurgeon, who's another influential Reformed voice, commented on this passage because he highlighted the joy that's found in such sacrificial giving. He humorously noted that while we may not all be called to sell our possessions, the willingness to share that I observed on Wednesday and what Char um, Charles Spurgeon said, to share even our least favorite fishing rod with our brother <laughs> could be a good start. 
But in this congregation, I see people sharing with each other all of the time. And this act of sharing is a practical manifestation of unity, and it reflects the shared blessings among the community members, because we really and truly are all so greatly blessed, aren't we? We've been given so much and so many blessings. So number three is called Unity, Harmony, and the Lord's Supper. Because what we, will, what we will be experiencing today is a, actually a profound expression of unity and harmony within the church. It's a time when believers, all of us, regardless of personal differences, come together to remember and proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Martin Luther who was also a key figure in the Reformation, saw in the Lord's Supper a powerful symbol of unity, stating, in this sacrament, we are united as one body, sharing one bread and one cup. Just as the melting of snow of April signals the reunification of separated waters, the Lord's Supper symbolizes unity in Christ. It's a moment of communal blessing, and I hope we can view it that way today. It's a moment of harmony, it's a moment of renewal, and it's much like the first thaw brings joy and relief to the residents of northern Minnesota. Wouldn't you agree? That first thaw is like, <sighs> Spring and summer are on the way. So here's my conclusion this morning. As the last patches of snow disappear under the April sun in northern Minnesota, we are reminded of the beauty of coming together, of the thawing and merging that brings new life and renewed hope. Psalm 133 and Acts 4, 32 through 35, call us to embrace unity, to share the blessings God has given us, and to commemorate our ultimate unity in Christ through the Lord's Supper. Let us today strive to live out this unity, to be a community where harmony prevails, which we are, so I feel like I'm kind of preaching to the choir, as they say. And to share the abundant blessings that such unity brings. As we partake of the Lord's Supper today, may we remember the perfect unity we have in Christ. And may our lives reflect the beauty of living together in unity. In the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And now we will stand and affirm our faith using the Apostles' Creed. So stand if you are able. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated.
I feel like I should do a few jumping jacks. <laughs> <laughs> seem to have much energy this morning. I apologize for that, but I'll push forward. So we do know that the prayers of our community are very important to us as we pray for one another. Because we know that Philippians 4, 6, and 7 says what? Can anyone say what it says after we've been repeating it for two years? Yeah. Yep. But in everything? by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So as we share our prayer concerns and joys this morning, when I say, Lord, in your mercy, please respond with hear our prayer. Do we have prayer concerns this morning? Or Joyce? Yes, Jeff. Yes, Angie. <laughs> well, I, I'm just putting a plug in again for Caitlin Clark, who plays today at 3 o'clock. So if you haven't watched her, watch her. She's great. So is what you're saying, Angie, is that a you joy. are an Iowa fan? Yes. <laughs> Okay, okay, what? very good. Caitlin. Oh, is it at two? Okay. All right, two o'clock. Don't miss it. She's a joy to watch. <laughs> Thank you. So were there any South Carolina fans in the congregation this morning? <laughs> really? One of the star guards is from the metro area. Is that what you said, Gordy? If so, from Minnesota. So, both. We'll, we'll. <laughs> All right, any other prayer concerns or requests this morning? Jeff. <laughs> oh, Jeff doesn't have one. <laughs> Poor Jeff. A um, March. <laughs> Good. Marge has a prayer of thanks for how welcoming this congregation has been to her, and she's very grateful. And one of these days, we'll have an official joining of Marge to our congregation, after which we'll have treats. <laughs> We just couldn't do it today because we weren't prepared, but, but we do have treats because on Communion Sunday every month, Padge brings remarkable treats. And I'm pretty sure, I could be wrong, Padge, but I know that I love Communion here because the Communion wafers are actually little pieces of cardamom bread. And every week I taste it and I'm like, oh, Thank you, this is wonderful. So I would imagine it's the same today, right? So as you're taking communion, think about cardamom. <laughs> yes, Janet. I have a joy that Roger went fishing in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> Janet's joy is that Roger went fishing in Canada. I don't know exactly why that's a joy, but. <laughs> Okay, so Roger is recovering from his shingles, and apparently he was feeling good enough to go to Canada, but he's still in pain. So we'll continue to keep Roger in prayer. Yes, Mel? Uh, Jim mother is in hospice, and she's in her final days. Oh, Jim DeVries' mother is in hospice, and she's in her final days. So we'll pray for Jim and the family. Thank you, Mel. Yes, Jeannie. Can you have an unspoken request, please? Okay. Jeannie has an unspoken request. Judy.
Thank you, thank you, Judy. Judy is praying thanksgiving for the life of Larry Salo and the fact that Irene can be here today and we can provide support and encouragement. Thank you, Judy. Let us pray. Eternal God, give us grateful hearts for the divine mysteries we cannot explain, solve, or grasp. Thank you that the good news of Christ's resurrection continues to impact this world with its ripples. May this miracle and its ongoing aftermath disrupt us even as it comforts us. May it send out to us telling others this life-changing story. Help us to risk telling others this life-changing story. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, we thank you for the beauty of this worship service, the singing of your praises, the rhythm of the seasons, and the fullness of this day. We remember those who Christ made a prior priority in his midst. People who lived outside the legal codes, the social codes, and the cultural norms. Remind us that Christ not only welcomed those presumed to be unworthy, but liberated their full dignity and humanity. Show us how this is something Christ continues to do in our midst, despite the narratives of division that try to put Christ back in the tomb. Give us eyes to see God. Give us courage to act. And God, please intervene in all of the lives of the prayer concerns and joys we voiced earlier. Lord, in your mercy. With the courage to act, we pray for this community and for the mission of the Universal Church. Like those mourning male and female disciples who could barely see the risen Christ through their despair, we are prone to pessimism, God. Remind us that Easter is always a miracle and that we at, are at our best when we walk by faith and not by sight. Remind us that we are called and equipped to be people of hope in a world entombed by death. Remind us that you are at work even now, giving us what we need to share our faith with others. It is in the name of our resurrected Lord we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Amen. We become who we are called to be, not through getting, acquiring, and possessing, but through giving. To that end this morning, let us worship God by giving our gifts, our good gifts, in Jesus' name.
sing the doxology. prayer of dedication. Good and gracious God, help us to say thank you, to live with gratitude, to look for the best in each other, and to live charitably with all. May your resurrection never stop surprising us, disrupting us, and transforming us until Christ's kingdom comes. Amen. Is this microphone working? Great. Thank you for bringing it to me, Don. I forgot to put it on today. Forgot a lot of things today. But on this Communion Sunday, which is April 7th, and also a birthday of a famous person in our congregation, we praise God and we thank God for all who have gone before us for generations celebrating the same feast that we celebrate today. Jesus Christ the Lord has prepared this table for all who love him and trust him alone for their salvation. He prepares it for all who are truly sorry for their sins, for all who truly believe in the Lord Jesus as their savior and who desire to live in obedience to him as Lord. We invite all of those just mentioned to come to this communion table this morning. Let us joyfully offer God our thanks and praise as we take this communion meal. Every time we eat this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the saving death of the risen Lord until he comes again, and he will come again. Our communion hymn is 505, Be Known to Us in Breaking Bread. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Hear the words of institution of the Holy Supper of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus, on the night of his arrest, took bread. And after giving thanks, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
in the same way he took the cup, saying, this is the new cup, or actually it's this is the cup, sealed in the covenant, the new covenant. It's sealed by my blood. It's shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me also. So today, as we pass the bread and juice, you will receive it from the servers. The server will say to you, the body and blood of Christ given for you, to which you will respond, thanks be to God. So these are the gifts of God for the people of God.
Please join me in the prayer after communion. Creator God, help us to build a word that grows into the shape of your communion table, where all are welcomed and all are fed. Make us a just grow your family by practices of mutuality, generosity, and justice. And may we be found to be witnesses to the truth of who we were created to be, people who belong to each other, people who belong to you. Amen. Our sending hymn this morning is They'll Know We Are Christians, and it's on your bulletin insert. Our benediction this morning is this. Jesus says, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. The work of the church is not over. It has just begun. Go with joy where the crucified and risen Christ is sending you. As you go, May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit go with you now and forevermore. Amen. Our traveling song will be the last verse of We Are One in the Spirit. Enjoy this Sunday afternoon, Bob Prosen's birthday, and please join us for coffee and treats in the back. Thank you. <laughs>